Max, Celtics are in real danger of falling into the play-in tournament. How much of this is on Brad Stevens? Some of it, but not as much, I think, as being, portray- as being portrayed by some. Look, the fact of the matter is COVID protocol has meant disruptions in the lineup. Uh, obviously, Kemba Walker's injury. Gordon Hayward's passing in the starting lineup isn't there anymore. He was more valuable than people realized. I find it hard to point to a coach who has lived in the Eastern Conference Finals in recent years, the one year that they stumble. Let's see what happens going forward. Chris Canty, you're up. Luka Doncic ejected with a flagrant two last night. Doesn't count towards his 15 total texts on the season. What did you make of that one on Colin Sexton? I think Luka Doncic is out of pocket for doing that. I I mean, that's a violation. I don't care what sport it is. There's a code amongst players, and clearly Luka violated it right there. And then I didn't care too much for his commentary after the game when he talked about he didn't know what he did. It looked pretty intentional what Luka Doncic was doing to Colin Sexton in that moment. I'm just saying. Chris not having it. Uh, Max, after dropping to the Knicks, Kawhi admitted he's dealing with a left hand issue. Um, How concerning is this for the Clippers? you got to be concerned. Like, are, are the Lakers handling it with LeBron better? Sit him out. Let him get better. Or are the Clippers handling it with Kawhi better? No, have him play through it. Continuity. Time will tell. But I'll tell you this. Kawhi, I expect to show up in the playoffs as he does every year. He had one bad game seven. Otherwise, is an all-time great playoff performer. Elevates under pressure. Paul George has not. To me, it's still about that. Batman needs his Robin to step up in these playoffs. If he does, the Clippers can get out of the West. If he doesn't, they can't. More NBA news. The league fined David Griffin 50K for detrimental comments, public criticism of officiating. The decision came two days after the Pelicans executive vice president of basketball operations spoke out strongly about his concerns over the amount of contact referees allowing New Orleans forward Zion Williamson to endure. Williamson currently out indefinitely with a fractured left index finger. Here's Griffin Friday. I'm really frustrated because this was avoidable. Um, We told the NBA through every means available to us that the way they were officiating Zion was going to get him injured. Um, And quite frankly, he's injured now because of the open season that there's been on Zion Williamson in the paint. He has been absolutely mauled in the paint on a regular basis to the point that other players have said to him, I'm going to keep doing this to you because they don't call it. So there is more violence encouraged in the paint against Zion Williamson than any player I've seen since Shaq. It was egregious and horrific then, and the same is true now. All right, again, that was Griffin on Friday. NBA champ Kendrick Perkins back on your screen. Perk, I truly believe in mentorship, so I understand you have a message for Zion. Please, go ahead. Well, first, Molly, let me address David Griffin, okay? And I'm addressing it in my New Orleans voice. God bless his heart, baby, because he don't know no better. And this is a damn shame. This is the reason that guys around, the old school guys call our league soft because of weak commentary and weak comments like that that David Griffin said. Now to Zion. I believe Zion is a future superstar. I believe that Zion is the face of the NBA. But this is what Zion have to realize. People are not going to move out of his way. This is a grown man's league. You know what happened when they start fouling Shaq hard? Shaq got more dominant. He got meaner. He started getting more offensive fouls. He started putting the elbow in people's throats and necks to move them out the way. He got fiercer. He got meaner. That's what Zion has to do. When he's he's already dominant, he has to get more dominant. Now you got to add a little spice of that red pepper or that crawfish seasoning that they have in New Orleans and get it more juice flowing. Have people afraid of him. That's the advice that need to be said. Not that baloney David Griffin just came up there and said a minute ago, well, a few days ago. Max, do you like David Griffin defending Zion and how he did it? I love it. And while, sure, Kendrick Perkins has played with every superstar in the NBA uh, in the last 10 or 12 years, and sure, Kendrick Perkins has won a championship, I dabbled in NBA 2K, so I think I have plenty of credibility on this subject. Don't embarrass (laughs) yourself. Let me explain something to you. There have been four players in league history that combine ridiculous size with ridiculous athletic ability, and the game was called differently against them. Wilt Chamberlain. Shaquille O'Neal, LeBron James, and now Zion Williamson. He's a physical freak, and the game is called differently against him. Perk, I'm not arguing against your point. Well, how are you now going to respond to that? I'm saying the guys on your franchise, executives, coaches, teammates, should absolutely have your back in exactly this way. They should step up and point it out. 
This is no different than what people did in Shaq's day. Or, I mean, it's the same thing. You think Phil Jackson never pointed out publicly that the game is called different for Shaq? Yeah, you want to draw attention to it. Maybe it buys you some calls. Plus, it lets your superstar know, you know, yeah, we got your back. It's not Zion's fault that he's so big, strong, and fast that he can blow through a foul and, and the refs don't even really see it because it didn't really affect them. It's still a foul and it should still be called. And if people want to make the same argument they made with Shaq, like, well, then, you know, how are we even going to play the game? That's for you to figure out if Shaq's an unstoppable weapon. That's not for Shaq. That's for you to figure out. Same thing with Zion. I love the fact that Griffin got his back. Perk, I hate to do this. I hate to do this. But I actually lean into war where Max is at with his argument. I like the fact that David Griffin came out and tried to defend his superstar. I think it's the right thing to do to put a public face on it and say, our organization recognizes there's a discrepancy in how the game is officiated when it comes to our superstar. Now, while I do think that's the right approach to take in front of the cameras, I think behind the scenes, the Pelicans have to be more pragmatic in their approach to keep their superstar healthy. Like, you got to recognize the reality that the game is being officiated with your superstar, and you got to try to figure out a way to keep him out of harm's way to try to mitigate the, the risk of injury in this situation. You realize because he's so dominant in the paint, there's going to be more contact on him. There's, that's just the nature of it. In football, the closer you get to the line of scrimmage, there's going to be more contact. The same in the NBA when you're in that painted area. So I think the Pelicans have to recognize, hey, we've got to maybe adjust how we're utilizing him, how we're deploying him, yep. what we're asking him to do in order to keep him health, keep him healthy and available to us. Big so perk. I think that's what Let me get in here. Big perk, scenes. you're my guy. I got something for you because you were physical and you know about that contact. So I got a little tape for you. I want to know how would Zion handle big perk? I'm just saying, and this is the this is the day we played in, right? This is what it is. Like you got to get physical. This is look, and, and Candy, I feel sorry for your loss of grin with Max Kellerman because <laughs> you of all people, I expect more because you played in the trenches in football. When you play in the paint, that's called the trenches. Zion initiates a lot of the contact. I used to go to war with the White Howard, right? The White Howard in Orlando Magic. The White Howard was a different the White Howard. He was getting Shaq type treatments. We used to bang bodies down low. We used to deliver hard fouls. Charles Oakley back in the day. Michael Jordan took hard fouls, took real hard fouls from 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 the from the Knicks, from from Charles Barkley and the Suns to whoever. Like this is in the trenches. Zion is initiating a lot of this contact. And if you're going to go down there and you're going to bang with the big fellas and you're going to be able to dish it out, you got to be able to Two take things. it. No one is going to move out of your way. Nobody, no, Two it things. It just don't work like that. Two it things, Perk. Like By your own admission, you had to play that way because you were not blessed with the fast twitchies that Zion Williamson had. How many Max, times you say you got Max, the whack body? That's Max, not Max, Zion Williamson. Max, so that's your Max, problem Max, and other Max. mere mortals' problems, not Zion's. That's one. What? Two, the way games are officiated has changed over the years, like it or not. And the rules changes are constantly in favor of the offense. It's no different in football. You can't breathe on the quarterback. That linebacker in Kansas City had Tom Brady wrapped up a couple years ago. Uh oh, can't touch him. He, Brady walked into the end zone. The same thing happens in basketball now. Yeah. It's it's a much more offense friendly league. So you don't have to like it. I don't have to like it. But that's the way yeah. it is. Yeah, and Ken, and let me say this, okay, Max, and let me. I'm gonna tell you this one time, all right? And don't get it twisted. In the NBA, I played my role, but you don't come straight out of high school and what I call the University of Cash of not dominating, all right? You better check my resume. Texas Basketball Hall of Famer. Broke all Shaquille O'Neal records. McDonald's All-American. Max, don't get it twisted. Perk, you're an NBA 20, champ. 28, 17, and 9. Perk, and you're an school. NBA don't champ. Let me just ask you something. That's the no point. You, man, you are making the point. Zion got. I'm talking about the trenches. This don't have nothing to do with skill set. This don't have nothing to do with none of that. We're talking about when you in the trenches and you in the battle and you in the thick of the things, I used to have a one go-to move where I would crab dribble, crab dribble, put my shoulder in somebody and shoot a jump hook. Did I expect everybody to back down from me because I was initiating the contact? No, I wanted the I wanted the smoke. So you go go receive the smoke, Max. 
I don't want to hear that. Her, Zion you, lives in the paint. Zion plays physical. He plays in the trenches. The battle is won in the trenches, and no team is going to back damn, down. Right. Dribble, dribble, shoot, brother. Look, here's the bottom line. By your own admission, you were the man, right? But when you get to the NBA, there are levels. And what I'm saying is even among the freak athletes in the NBA, Zion is in a group of three or four dudes who ever lived that combine that size with that athletic right. ability. We got to live it different. there. Max, I'm not going to let you call him whack body on our show. Perk, how are you going to let him? Perk, your disrespect. body is a temple, okay? That's what everyone Perk, needs what to know at home. What do you call it? Every Let's time leave you come on the Max Kellerman show on ESPN Radio, what do you call it? I got you, Perk. You know what? You know what? I'm turning. not calling it.